Editing the essence of wildlife photography is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone, and welcome. All right, so we're going to dive right in to our um, editing wildlife photography. Now, you've seen me edit this image before, so I'm going to do something slightly different with it. I'm falling in love, in love, love, love with 16 by 9 ratio, and I can't wait to finish my project on them because I can't wait to print the 16 by 9 all the way up through. So I cropped this to 16 by 9. Let me show you what it looked like without the crop. Look at this. Now, why am I showing it to you? Well, first of all, let me fix this just a little bit. So I'm getting rid of this distract, distracted horse. And typically, right here, you, you stick with the rules of um, odds. So odd numbers are best. This kind of breaks that rule because this horse is definitely the dominant horse. So that's one. And now you have one, two, three. So this kind of breaks the rule. That's why this works. But the reason why I'm showing this to you is, if we come over here, look at this. I shot it with a 50 or a 500 millimeter lens. So I, if I'm not mistaken, that was that Tamron lens, 150 to 600. I was short 100 millimeters. Had I have shot it and cropped it tighter, then we wouldn't have to crop nearly, nearly, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a huge crop. But it works. In the future, I'm going to remind myself to make sure I uh, comp comp or compose the shot a little bit tighter. All right? So we got that out of the way. Now, I'm going to come over here to, to develop. And look at the tones. It's a, just It looks flat. So to fix the tone and the contrast, I'm going to come over here, touch base on the, what, the black tones. Good. And the white tones. So I want white to be white. I want black to be a little bit black. Now notice by doing this, yes, I'm darkening the entire image. Well, this is where I'll come in with lift the shadows just a little bit. And what I'm looking at is I, I like what it's doing everywhere except the horses. So we'll, we'll address that in a moment. But notice what I did here. Instead of trying to up the exposure, that's my last resort. Um, I try to do the tones first, and then maybe let's see what the contrast will do. Well, that's an extreme. Yeah, okay. So I'll, Smart Contract does a pretty good job. I'm not sure if I really need to work with the highlights, but overall, let's check him out. Yeah, that did a pretty good job. Um, I have that set. Now, what I do want to do is for the Enhance, I'm going to go way overboard here. Yep, that's what I want because it's the horses I'm dealing with, not the grounds. Mask, brush, and I want to paint in the effect just on the horses here. It's okay if there's a little spill. It's not that big of a deal. Good. There we go. So now the horses are pretty well set. Yeah, I like it. I am going to get rid of some of this spill here. That's not that big of a deal. But look what it, look what it did for me. Look, look how it brought out the detail a little bit more in the horse, not the detail, but the, the sharp or the brightness of the horses. So your eyes are focused a little bit more towards them. Now, originally I said it doesn't matter if I went in between, but obviously it's giving me a little glow. There we go. All right, there we have it. Yeah, I like that. All right, so I have that set. Now I'm going to come over to structure. And I do want to increase structure quite a bit. Now, unlike clarity in Lightroom, clarity is going to actually change the color. Structure is not going to do that. It's going to affect the brightest and the darkest parts. And it's going to give you the, perceive, the perception that you're sharpening the image. You're making it look sharper. Good, let's see. 
Good. And the difference between boost and amount, amount deals with all of the pixels. Boost is only affecting the, the fine details in the image. Good. So I have that set. Now, here's where I make a decision. Do I do my favorite dramatic tool first, or do we do the mystical? That's entirely up to you. I'm going to go to the mystical first. Now, I'll go to an extreme. What I really am looking for here is I love what it's doing to the sawgrass, to the horses, not, not as much. So what I'm going to do is this. I'll go to 100. You know, 100 is definitely too much. So I'm going to look at the grass first. I think the grass looks good right about there. All right, so 70, I'm going to put in my head. Well, now let's check out the horses. I think the horses look good. Yeah, at about 40. All right, so 70 it is. And what I'm going to do now is come in with a brush erase and we said 70 right so let's do the strength of 30 and what i'm going to do is this i want to erase the effect on the horses but at 30 percent so i still have some of that um magical or mystical tool but I'm not doing it at 100%. There we go. Look at that. Yeah, I, I like what it did. So now that I did this, here's where I can make a decision. Do I really want that dramatic tool now, even though that's my favorite? Yeah, I do. I'm sorry. The, the moment I saw what it did to the horses and what it did here, I got to do it. And saturation, I think, is what I'm really liking the most. And the brightness is good. Okay, so let's analyze what dramatic did. So the amount, of course, you know that, how strength the strength is. But this local contrast, I have it at 50. Look what it's doing throughout the image. So 50 seemed pretty good or in the 40s. But these two right here, the brightness and the saturation, <clears throat> excuse me, that's really going to make a huge difference because here's brightness. If I bring it way down, it looks too dark. Way up now, all that work I did on the contrast and the tone is gone. So let's split the difference or put it a happy medium. And then saturation is a minus 12. Look at the difference. It's very subtle. Before, after. You know what? That saturation, I'm going to bring it back a little bit, a lot of bit. Yeah, you know what? I actually like it better that way. Now, by doing what I just did with the dramatic, let's see if the brightness will help us here. Yeah, it's right about there. I I'm looking at the horses, and I kind of want more. So I'm going to come back to develop. I want more of their shadows. There we go. There we go. All right, now the horses are looking good. Matt, now, I could just go over and copy the mask from one of the other areas, but I'll stick it to here. I'm going to paint it at 100%. Good. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that, that kind of, yeah, that, that brought out what I needed more in the horses. I just didn't like the idea the horses were getting all muddied. So here's, here's what we started with. Here's what we're going to end with. So look at the difference. I like where the horses are here, but yeah, I like this much better, especially with the, the mystical tool. I like what that did with it, and I really like what the dramatic tool did. Now, we could try to finish off with the vignette. However, I talked to a development team, and we really need to fix this towards a post. So the vignette tool isn't going to really work for us in this case. So why don't we just do this? Let's darken the whole area, mask it, and either, you know what, we'll paint it. Paint it in. I'm going to use a large brush and just gradually come to the top. 
bring it to the bottom. No use, no major science with it, just bring it in. So the vignette tool, in my opinion, would do a much better job on this. But because we cropped it, it's not really allowing us to do what we want. So now I just lower the strength because what I want to do is mimic the um, relight. There we go. All right, let's see if it makes a difference. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, look, look how that's drawing the attention back to the horses. All right, so let's take a look. This is what we started with. And I was shifting because you saw that I moved it in the, in the layers to this. And, and earlier before the show started, we talked to the team. I got to be honest, I had no idea that with my layers in a crop, look at this, I could still adjust the, the horses because even though I cropped it, it's not destructive. I didn't realize that my layers will keep it and all the edits which you don't see, are beyond these pixels here. So that looks great. Once it's done, I'm going to export it to a folder. Uh, I'll leave it at JPEG. But which folder? Well, I want to bring it back to the folder it originated from. So I believe I have it under presentation. Yep, complete. And I'm going to leave it. Look, look at the size it is. As much as I cropped it, Look how much how much how many pixels we have. I could easily make this into a 16 by 20, no problem. Export. And there we have it. So I just wanted to show you where once you're done with the image, it's always good practice to export a copy of it just in case something happens to your catalog, or if you lose the edits, or if you start to go back in and you start to make major changes and it looks nothing like you originally thought it would be, I like to export it in the original folder that it came from. This way I can always go back and have my originals. All right, so there we have it. That's how we work on editing the, the, um, the wildlife photography, the essence of it. Now, if you're here, please stick around for the Ask Me Anything segment. For everyone else, thanks so much for watching us, and we'll see you at the next Coffee Break.